I'm Algernon Cash, and this is Eat Drink Triad, your leading source for what's happening with the local food and beverage industry right here in your backyard. And um, as many of you know, I, I really enjoy highlighting all of the great culinary talent that we have throughout our region, not just here in Winston-Salem, which is my home, but Greensboro and High Point and Lexington. I just think we have so much great talent throughout the region. And one thing that I'm working on right now, starting in 2022, I can't wait to release the, the first edition in January. I'm actually gonna start publishing my chef's ranking. Um, so I'm gonna be telling you who I think are the top chefs throughout the entire region. We're gonna do that twice a year um, and try to give you a little insight on who you should go visit. But one person that I'm almost sure you're gonna see on that list is Chef David Swing. He is someone that I've had the chance to get to know over the last few years, um, actually met him when he was leading um, the opening of Sir Winston, which is in the Hotel Indigo on 4th Street here in downtown Winston-Salem. Um, I don't talk enough about this, but there's a nice little cool neighborhood bar on 4th Street in downtown called Thirsty Palette. If you're just looking for a chill place to go, um, go check out Thirsty Palette. Eric Zyglis and his wife owns it. And um, that's where I met Chef Swing. And if, if you've ever had to open a restaurant, um, you spend a lot of time all day dealing with a lot of crazy stuff. So you, you, you want a nice cocktail towards the end of the day. And um, I was able to enjoy many conversations with Chef Swing, felt like I got to know him. And um, then subsequently he moved on and is now the executive chef at Young Cardinal. And so happy to have him here with y'all this morning. Chef Swing, how's it going, man? It's going great. Appreciate you having me. I appreciate you doing this, man. And it's, it's probably long overdue, you know, as, as well as you and I know each other. Um, I should have should have been helped my audience to get connected with you and um, learn more about you, too. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. So hey, better, better, better late than, than, than never. But, um, you, you know, I want to start with Young Cardinal because, um, I, you know, if you follow me on social media, you, you know that I'm a huge fan of Young Cardinal probably eat there two, three times a week in the morning, have business meetings there. Sometimes I just go there to relax myself for Sunday brunch. And, you know, I feel like y'all have done something like really cool and special with Young Cardinal, but it wasn't necessarily what you originally intended. Like you really opened about a week before COVID. I was there the night before I crashed the party. And you guys sh shortly, you didn't shut down. You kept working through COVID, but the business model changed a little bit. So talk, talk first about, what you're doing at Young Cardinal now compared to what you thought you might be doing? Well, um, me and Adam Andrews, the chef owner, uh, you know, we had an initial concept that was going to be a little bit more standard breakfast. You know, that was kind of the game plan to roll out. And like you said, COVID happened <laughs> very shortly after we opened, got through that thankfully. And it's kind of, it, it was very organic the way we kind of morphed. We obviously kept all the breakfast standards, um, but I kind of started tweaking with things only on weekends, kind of just to see, you know, what would work and what wouldn't. And it really seemed like we hit a good groove, uh, you know, late last fall in terms of ingredients and certain kinds of specials and one thing I can't say enough about Adam is he's very you know he lets me do my thing you know not getting too crazy but uh you know he, he stands by me and has my back so uh yeah we kind of just morphed into this very unique breakfast brunch spot that I think fills the void uh of downtown you know, there's not, there's not a lot of other places that do what we do in downtown or in Winston, period. Um, so, yeah, man, I like to get crazy with the Benedicts and the avocado toast changes every day and I get to kind of flex some creativity there. So, uh, yeah, we, we really, and I love the fact it was very organic. We didn't even really think of it. We, uh, we were going over some menu changes coming up and, you know, I, I remember our initial conversation where me and Adam just sat down and banged out the first young Cardinal menu in like 10 minutes. So it's cool to see where we are now compared to where we started. 
No, I, I think it's pretty cool. I heard you might be coming up with a cool ranch Dorito burger. Um, I heard that on the street somewhere. So we'll <laughs> yeah, man. We'll that's, see, that's we'll, up my sleeve. We'll that's see if that hits the, hits the feature menu. That's an inside <laughs> joke for my audience. So um, it, 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 you know, you mentioned that Adam gives you a lot of leeway, and and I, I you know, when I describe you and I describe Young Cardinal, and I, I agree with you. I think you all do fill an interesting void, in my opinion. Um, there's very limited number of places to get a really solid breakfast in downtown Winston-Salem, especially if you want to avoid a, a hotel atmosphere. So if you want to go to something that's independently owned, you don't have a lot of options. Young Cardinal, by, hands down, is, is my number one option. And you, you mentioned how Adam gives you a little bit of leeway with the menu. I, I know like your Huevos Rancheros, which is, you know, typically you see that item made with like maybe a chicken or something like that, but you make it with pulled pork, which right. gives it like more of a Southern flair. How, how would you describe your style? If someone was asking you, what is your culinary style? What, what would you, what would you say? Southern based with grand world views. I think that's a good, good explanation. I mean, even some of the things I saw you come up with at Sir Winston, um, which I know you and I would talk offline and I, I would say, well, I don't know if that's going to work. And um, you put sort of a little bit of a Southern flair on it and um you know, it would, it would go. And, and a couple of times I was able to come there when you were at Sir Winston, um, everything I had was, was, was phenomenal. So is this something, this style has, is this something you feel like you created or was there like a, a chef that you, you learned from or. I, I, I think tons of chefs before me kind of developed this style and it, you know, I didn't really pull from anybody. I've got, of course, you know, every, Every chef, every cook's got their heroes and, you know, their top five chefs, but I kind of like to pull in inspiration from all over. Um, so, yeah, I can't really name one, you know, because it really does. It comes from, I'm, I'm always, no matter what, pulling in something from either a recipe or, you know, I might see something on Instagram where the chef or the restaurant's tagged and I'll go dig and do some more research. And that leads me down a rabbit hole on, you know, fermenting fruit or something like that. So I don't know. It's just I'm, I'm obviously I'm a Winston-Salem native and, and grew up, spent the majority of my adult life in the South. But I think there's a lot of things <clears throat> that are old school grandma style Southern cooking that you can take and even if you're tweaking an ingredient or two or tweaking uh, a method of cooking, I think there's just, there's a really solid base and foundation with Southern cooking that can be applied worldwide. Yeah, one, one person that I actually, actually a couple of people that I met through you um, was um, Sean and Ebony Warfield. And um, Sean Warfield, Warfield pressure, they were, they were at the restaurant they, today. They, they, I, I was, yeah, I seen a picture of them online today. I think they were on a date or something they said, but, um, yeah. um, Sean Warfield uh, for my audience is the sous chef down in, uh, Sophie's he's, he's tag teaming with, um, John Wilson, who I also think the world of um, very, very creative. You, you and John actually remind, remind me of each other uh, quite a bit. That, that's a and great team right there. It is. And, and then I look at what Ebony is doing and, you know, a lot of the, some of the things I see Ebony coming up with sometimes makes me think about you as well. And so I think she's someone that's gotten really creative. I, I was able to check out some of her food at the Love Love Festival. Um, actually ate with her this past weekend down at Six and Vine. She had a nice hot chicken special, hot honey chicken special. Yeah, I saw that. And um, so, yeah, she she's really, man, she's she's kicked it into a whole nother gear. You know, you know, originally though, Young Cardinal, we talked about Young Cardinal filling a void, but there was another void that young Cardinal was supposed to fill. We we constantly hear the, the cries and the gnashing of oh, teeth yeah. throughout Winston-Salem when it comes to late night food option. And young Cardinal was planning to stay open to two or three and, and be that option. Um, look, looks like maybe y'all have, have abandoned that idea. Is that still on the table or? So for anybody that doesn't know me and Adam Andrews have been the solid foundation of Young Cardinal, literally me and Adam Andrews. I mean, on almost any given day of the week, you pop open the door, it's the two of us back there cooking. Thankfully, we're starting to see some uh, some applications roll in. But the, the first two weekends we did the late night, not only <laughs> did we only sleep like three hours to turn around and do weekend brunch after those late nights, um, but we were both really surprised especially with our location on fourth 
there there wasn't that big of an audience coming out. So um, I know it's something we may revisit, but I believe Mr. Andrews does not want to um, do it at Young Cardinal. Well, I, and I, I would imagine that late night crowd was being um, suppressed by COVID too, right? People weren't hanging out, at, you know, as much late night and the bars weren't open as late. And some of that well, late might have been driving. Yeah, but I mean, even that first weekend we did it before, you know, pre-pandemic, pre all that. Um, I don't know. I get. I was like amped up because I was like, all right, we're going to, you know, it's going to be going crazy from 10 p.m. to we we're staying up until 2.30 a.m. And, you know, you get like one decent push from uh, our neighboring bars, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, I, I've, I've always been someone who, who says I, I think some of these calls for late night food options in Winston-Salem is a little bit um, misguided. I, I, I think there are a group of people and most of them are young people. And I do think we need to be um, um, sympathetic to what they are asking for from our, our food and beverage industry and our scene. Um, but it, there's just not enough people to support it. Um, right. and, and you certainly can't support it every night. You, you might be able to get away with doing it on Friday or Saturday, but but even that's really difficult. And you you see that evidence by the fact that, you know, even Dave Hillman has now gotten out of the late night business. Burke Street closes at 10 o'clock on Friday, Saturday. They don't do the 3 a.m. thing anymore. Um, so I, I I don't know. It just doesn't feel like there's there, there, there is a small group of voices in town that want these late night menu options, um, but it doesn't equate to the, the amount of sales that a restaurant needs to actually justify to be open that, that, right. that late and, night. And just looking out for staff, I mean, yeah, I mean, and the people you're dealing with, it, you know, some of the people I would see Dave's <laughs> staff having to deal with at Burke Street Pizza at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, you, you don't really want to ask your staff to deal with it. But um, real, real, one, probably one of my last questions, you, you and I, I would agree with the comment that you just made. I think on any given morning, if I'm at Young Cardinal, it, it's probably you or Adam in the back cooking. Um, it might be 30 degrees below zero, but Adam's going to have on some shorts. And, you know, if, if it's not both, both, one of y'all, it's both of y'all back there cooking. Right. And, um, you know, what, what is it like? You, you know, Chef Adam Andrews is, is probably one of the most prolific and successful chef restaurant operators, in my opinion, in town. You know, quite frankly, you know, he's got Jeffrey Adams. He's got Young Cardinal. He was involved with Lean 4th Street Filling Station. He's got Dogwood Hops and Crops. He's got Trophy Room. He, he, he's got Twisted Pine, which is the catering company. Right. The, the guy's hugely successful, but actually not very well known. Um, not a lot of people know who he is. What, what's it like working with Chef Adam Andrews? Adam Andrews is one of the most down to earth, nicest guys I've ever met in my life. He, you know, in the last year and a half, two years, he literally, I look at him as an older brother figure i mean he he's awesome um I've, I've said it countless times his we get along we're, we're different in a lot of ways but we get along very well because we we work the same you know we don't we we kick it into overdrive um but working together especially just the two of us for so long we barely have to talk to each other in the kitchen which People think, you know, people think I'm joking when I say that or I'm messing with them. And I'm like, no, 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 we got, we got our routine down. You could come in there on a slam Sunday brunch and literally me and him barely have to talk. Um, but no, I mean, I, you're right. He, it's, it, it kind of makes me laugh that he's not that well known. And I just think he likes it that way. But, I know he likes it that way. It, it, if you're, if you happen to be down there eating at Young Cardinal, you, you've probably seen Adam. You just don't realize it. And um, he probably looks like just a, an ordinary cook coming into work. But um, he, he, he's, the, he's the guy. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for people who are in those positions, but, but you know, don't um, abuse or misuse it or they're not too loud about it or, or not too grandiose. And, and that is Adam Andrews. And, and that, that is one reason that I tell people to support all his businesses um, sim simply because of just his work ethic and who he is and his character and so forth. And, you know, when COVID hit, 
I, I never once, all the times I would come down there and see you guys, you, you know, I, I never once heard him. I did not one time that I ever hear him say anything negative or cry the blues or, you know, woe is me. I never heard it. Yeah. Um, all I saw was him just dig in a little deeper and work a little harder and, you know, stay a little longer and a little later. And so that's a strong reason. Obviously, go see Chef Swing. He's probably one of the most creative chefs we got in the region. He's doing great things at Young Cardinal. But we also want to make sure we support people like Chef Adam Andrews and, and what he's doing in town, too. Um, I just want my audience to know coming up in October, you do have Farm to Fourth. Um, Chef David Swing, Young Cardinal, will be participating in that. That, that is an initiative led by Providence Kitchen. They block off Fourth Street. Um, it's a gr really great opportunity to have a meal that's locally inspired. And then also coming up September 19th through the 25th, um, we will have Burger Week, Eat, Drink, Burger Week, which is being hosted by Eat, Drink, Triad, the Winston-Salem Journal, and the News and Record. And Chef Swing will be participating in Burger Week. So we encourage you to go down and see what masterpiece he comes up with what and like what he's doing. What kind of crazy breakfast burger can I pull out of my sleeve? I, I can't wait. And I told you offline, I'll let the audience know, we, we are buying championship belts. And I can't, I can't wait to walk in somebody's restaurant and see that belt hanging on the wall. On the wall? Nah, it's going to be, it's going to be around my waist. I'm not hanging it on the wall. It'll be around my waist. You get you some Ric Flair music and every time you come in for a shift. Don't think I won't do it. Don't we'll think I won't. Well, hey, man, this is your first visit. Won't be the last. We'll get you back on here for this anytime. If you got something going on, let us know so we can let the audience know. To my audience, I always appreciate you joining me. Uh, make sure you do stay tuned to WTOB every week because we announce the restaurant of the week. Also, Eat, Drink, Try It happens every Sunday morning. And um, of course, we want to thank our sponsors and we want to ask you follow Eat, Drink, Try It on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Until next time, y'all stay locked in.